Well, first Holmes was born, then he got fat, bald, and tired, tired, tired. What's up, Holmes? Go, it's, it's go time, it's show time, we're on the show. This is my show. It's one of my shows. It's called Sup Holmes. Thanks for joining me on the show. It's a live stream show. It's a talk show. And I'm here with Joachim Sandberg. Is that how I say the last name? It's good enough. Um, <laughs> no, it's that was not. An amazing <laughs> intro. <laughs> yeah, I'm really, I'm really yeah. quite professional. Uh, you can tell by my chat. And you. And the uh, made up flag in the background. Yeah, I know. It's, uh, yeah. I used to have all this video game stuff in the background, but it was too busy. And I couldn't mm -hmm. handle it. The, 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 uh, the internet couldn't handle all the different pixels, so I just went with three colors. Uh, whereas and, you, you're like... And some you know, sperm in a plate. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually a stuffed animal of a, uh, called a Nephilim from a game called El Shaddai, which nobody played. I wonder if you'd like it. Me included. Yeah, you didn't play it. Most people didn't. It was the art director of Okami got to make his own game. So he's the art director and just the general director, uh, which yeah. was... Yes? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, half of the time, it's just I don't let myself play games, and half the time, I don't like games. <laughs> so it's sort of like I have to be working. I can't be playing games. It's one that might interest <clears throat> you, though, because you're an artist who's also the director of his own games. You started yeah. as just a pixel artist professionally. Is that right? No, I started making my own games when I was about 12. And no. pic pixel art, I learned from that, basically. Huh. Interesting. So uh, what was the first game you made at 12? It was called... Well, uh, first of all, I like uh, ripped graphics from everywhere. It was like Sonic the Hedgehog or Mario games or whatever, and just uh, turned around in a program called the Games Factory, huh. which is basic, which is pretty much the baseline for the program I still use <laughs> stubbornly. Interesting. And but, uh, what was that game called? What What was that? At Twelve. What were you thinking? The earliest I can remember that I made my own graphics were were called Freddy the Bug. So that's sort of like the childish mind. Ah, um, how old were you then? 12, 13. Oh, okay. uh, yeah. uh, I can't really remember. That's okay. <laughs> and how old are you now? 25. Really? You're so young. I'm 10 years older than you. I could be a weird dad. <laughs> if I was a really dad, if, if you were in a very bad country, you could be my dad. <laughs> <laughs> That's a yeah. lot. You've been making games yeah. for 13 years. So, um, well, basically, the graphics in that game were just MS Paint boxes. So I didn't really understand the concept of pixel art yet. Basically, oh. that you zoom in on a bitmap and start placing them by hand. Right. That right. was sort of, you have to understand that concept at some point. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And uh, it was more work, I'd imagine. Sounds like you just wanted to get right into the design stuff and, uh, before you were even a teenager. You were a preteen. You're a yeah. Well, and that's basically all I've done forever since then. So. <laughs> <laughs> and when so did you get your? Yeah. When people ask me how uh, how I learned things, it was by doing nothing but trying to make games for uh, what is it, thirteen, twelve years or something. Yeah. Yeah. So, about twelve and a half. Uh, so it's a little difficult when people like ask what software I use. It's not really the software. It's wasting a lot of your time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> sure, sure, sure. Um, and you just put uh, one of your, not, I wouldn't say older. How, uh, how old is, I never have to say it out loud, actually. Naruto Love 2? The Evolution? Is that how I say it? Yeah, yes, it's a sequel to a Naruto game. No, it's, I say <laughs> Noi 2. <laughs> I say Noi 2. Noi 2 Love 2. The yeah. Evolution. Evolution backwards. backwards. And that's, uh, you put that on Steam a couple of weeks ago. Is that uh, right? One and a half. One and a 23rd. half. The 23rd. Ah, okay. How's that yeah. going? Are people buying it? It's going all right, but it's not a new game or anything. But it's, I'm happy, so. Oh, good. good. Yeah. <laughs> it yeah. Was, and, uh, 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 I sold everything I ever sold on Plymouth, the other service I used, in one day. Really? But that was that was eighteen hundred copies. So <laughs> Okay. That's nothing. Okay. Huh. Yeah. Well hopefully you'll sell some more copies after promoting your, your hot game right now. Tell us about your hot game. Promote it. Don't they are conquests. Uh, oh, yeah. 
<laughs> and you've been working on <laughs> that. That wasn't one. what you were thinking of. <laughs> no, you're really <laughs> for a loop, but I can run with you. That's a, mm -hmm. speaking of the Econoclast, that's sort of a steampunk. Is that okay to say, it's steampunk? A, no. Well, it's okay to say it, but every, <laughs> the only uh, thing I thought uh, in the design was uh, an alternate world in a slight future, basically. Oh, okay. It That's, gave me uh, a steampunky feel because it's got like a blues bar and a, just this kind of feeling of old-fashioned but evolved in a different direction, which is kind of what steampunk uh, The blues bar is actually a community center, but it has a bar. But uh, oh. if you played Ivor Springs, uh, something I uh, toyed around with uh, in like 2007 or something, it is a bar, so you're basically right. <laughs> oh, every once in a while, I'm kind, yeah, of, kind yeah. of right. So tell mm. us about uh, the Econoclast is a game you've been working on for a while now. It seems mm. like mm. a real evolution for you. Um, your sprite work, uh, what you love, observed is, is grown and changed. Uh, and I like all of your work, but I, I think I'm most Thank fond you. of the Econoclast so far. But uh, enough about what I think of it. J tell the listeners about the Econoclast, just in case they don't know. What is it's it? a very self-indulgent game. Uh, basically, I always wanted to make a Metroidvania. And this is basically, I feel, my last chance to make it sort of alone. Oh, uh, uh, yeah. Make Maybe. it a, an entirely something that's uh, something out of my mind. It's not a selfish thing as much as a challenge to myself mm. that I always wanted to do. And uh, I tried with Mina of the Pirates once, a game that's on my site, but I don't think anyone played. I got yeah, pretty I far on that one, but it doesn't really work for everyone anymore, I don't think. Huh, like programming but, uh, wise or just fun wise doesn't work? To run it. Oh. I don't think it's, it's working very well. I, even Noite Love 1 runs at like uh, 1x windowed only. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I haven't played and, that one in a while. No, no it's not good. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a little harsh. I wouldn't say that. I, I enjoyed it, but I, I added an old PC that maybe ran better. So how well, many of your the, games have you made solely by yourself? Because it seems like it's almost all of them have been solo. It is all of them. All, it is all of them. I I have tried with other people in the past, but it's usually ended with uh, nothing happening or sourly, <laughs> basically not <laughs> not agreeing with the people. I don't know how how that makes me look, but oh no, it's it's pretty normal. I think. <laughs> um, collaboration <clears throat> for artists is is a huge challenge, especially with something with a video game where. Most people who make games want to create their own world because they have a vision and they have the desire to create a place that's solely theirs, that runs by their rules. And then you have to like agree with someone else on how to do that. You're bound to, to butt heads. Yeah, but, yeah, but that, uh, that's, uh, I don't have anything against working with people. I absolutely want to work with people if I finally finish this Iconoclast because it's really difficult to do it alone if you want to make larger projects. Like for instance, the sole reason I still do pixel art is because it's easy and it's realistic if I'm gonna make these big games. Sure. So I really do wanna make something that's hand painted or 3D or any kind of game. Mm -hmm. so, um, just I do wanna finish this game and then definitely team up with people. If I'm telling people uh, it's going to be entirely my vision if I do it alone. It sounds really selfish. <laughs> oh, I don't think so. I, th I think it sounds artistic. <clears throat> you know, Picasso didn't team up with uh, Cezanne or some guy and do like a duo painting. When when someone has their own vision, they're passionate about it and they get it done. And that's, that's how I've always seen your games. But you were saying before you would do different styles if you could. Uh, I'd like to... Yeah, I want to do every kind of game, basically. <laughs> You already have ideas for what kind of like polygon-based game you would make, or if it was like a hand painting. I have. Everyone has just completely unrealistic ideas, of course. I want to make a three D action adventure game about ice skating. About what? <laughs> ice skating. Ice skating. Yeah, basically a fantasy world about somebody who has to uh, skate on ice roads. <laughs> if I'm gonna be more technical. And yeah. what uh would that be the like the central That's, gameplay hook is like how to ice skate well? <laughs> yeah, it's balance. Game. No, um, it's basically just the premise for the game. So huh. gameplay, oh. uh, if gameplay 
it's too dependent on uh, the actual setting you created. It can usually be a little limited, sort of like when you try to design gameplay entirely around realism. I'm not mm -hmm. really interested in that. Like, for instance, if you stand uh, next to a wall in a shooter and you have to pull up the gun to you, that's oh, something right. I really dislike because it feels pointless. It just feels like it's there for realism. Right. right, right. I don't know how you feel. <laughs> oh, no, that makes a lot of sense. I think... Um serving fun and gameplay first and everything else is, is secondary to that. I think story, premise, graphics, everything should be service to what's going to make the game most fun to actually play. Um, and I agree. I think a lot of uh, game designers have, have sort of lost sight of that because there's this push to be the biggest, be the most realistic, be the most impressive by standards that are kind of separate from video game standards. That's there. Yeah. A lot of people are going by movie standards or TV standards, but they're not going by gameplay standards, which is, which is what I think video games are, are hopefully about. And uh, it seems to me that you think so too. I've seen some of your yeah. game and talks, pretty good. My my game talks. Yeah, I love that video you did about uh, Metroid. Oh, the Metroid. video. <laughs> yeah, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I was thinking, you have I appeared on uh, any? <laughs> Conference no, this or something. Is, I'm quite honored. <laughs> I think this might be one of your uh, only live stream video shows you've done so far. Is that right? Well, I haven't done live stream ever. No, thank you for uh, taking a chance. <laughs> I'm trying well, to, I have right to try it sometime. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How's it yeah. going so far? Uh, I'm just talking and hoping I'm not saying anything stupid. So. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think you're doing mm. great. Um, so there's so much stuff I want to talk to you about. Uh, I'm interested in hearing what kind of stuff you've tried to take from games that you've enjoyed in the past. I'm interested in uh, hearing about what you think of uh, current games, if you think there's a lot of uh, big name games that are doing it right or doing it wrong. I still want to hear more about the Okano class. We've got to get to that too at some point. Yeah. So uh, it's like just... you're doing adventure. Which one do you want to talk about? I just feel really boring when I try to... People really want to hear the specific games that influenced me. But mm. uh, I think that, considering I can't really say any, it has to be a conglomeration of everything I ever played. That's right. basically what I say. Like, for instance, everyone thinks I played Gunstar Heroes when I made Noitu Love 2. But uh, basically, I'd say it's more Metal Slug, but it's sort of a, a love action that comes from the action elements of other games. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's sort of hard to explain. It's sort of like... If, I, if you take the favorite elements from uh, different games and put it in, only the action elements, that's sort of the reason why No to Love 2 has the, uh, the bosses are sort of pattern-based more in a Zelda matter, manner. Huh. If you even paid attention to that. It's sort of the... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I, I did, but I hadn't thought of it that way. They definitely seem different than Metal Slug bosses, which are just... Yeah, for instance... Shoot the weak point. Yeah, the, the second boss especially, which actually got complaints because it was so pattern-based. It's uh, mm. the orchestra boss, oh, where, right, you, where, right, you have, yeah, okay. where you have to press the keys at the uh, appropriate time. That boss didn't originally have his second form where you just punch on him, but, uh, but people complained that didn't feel like they actually fought the boss. So really? I take it a little too... Yeah, so it feels... I probably take it a little too far sometimes and should have more bullet sponge bosses. <laughs> Oh, I don't think so. I think mixing it up is great. That was a... Well, the, my problem well, with your game... It's is mixing it up now. It didn't before. <laughs> right, so you're learning the yeah. mix now. I yeah. don't know. I thought that was a good mix. But I may be biased, and I'll admit that, because I just love the presentation in your game so much and the freshness that they bring and your, your particular style and how it's... Like you are saying, you borrow from things that you like, but you don't steal. You, you kind of make an amalgamation of all these different things. And I just well, fell over that game. All of Destructoid did when when uh, no no Naito. Now see, I love it, but I can't even say Noitu. 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 Isn't Noitu. that the isn't that the most easy <laughs> way to read it? Noitu. <laughs> it is. I do tend to think uh, to myself. <laughs> Noitu loved to uh, all of Destructoid. Anthony Birch uh, fell over that and wrote about it right away, and then I played it, and then we all passed it around and uh, mm. and ate it up. So thank you for making that. I, I hate to hear you being so self-critical. I hope you realize your games are fantastic. But they crash. <laughs> <laughs> well, every game <clears throat> crashes sometimes. I mean, cars crash, but we still love them. We drive them around. Uh-oh. What? Uh, I'm a hypocrite. I'm hearing from our engineer. 
that I oh I guess I criticize myself too sometimes. Anyway, I guess not. Mm. Um, so well, uh, you, like, uh, if if you criticize yourself, you're gonna at least gonna likely improve. <laughs> oh, that's true. That's true. Yeah. I think being um, focused on things you can improve is always good, but you have to like yourself a little bit, and you must yeah. like yourself somewhat, or else you wouldn't keep making it. I presume you kind of like your games, kind of. I like my ideas. I don't uh, like the work. <laughs> right, right, yeah, I know how that feels. Uh, it never mm. comes out quite like you planned, does it? Anything you do. No. Rants. And, uh, and how long <laughs> have you been working on the Icono class, by the way, speaking of ideas and, and making Well, something? this exact uh, iteration is since um, August 2010, but there has been so many stops or uh, intermission or just losing motivation and stuff like that. So. Sure. Total, it's not at all that long. Like for instance, when I do work, I work fast because No to Love Two. I never got sick of working on that game, and that took me nine months. Ah, okay. okay. That's my record speed, basically. Right, right, right. So and, I don't know. Okay. I was making Ivory Springs in 2007, and the beginning of Icon Class is basically a remake of that. I don't know if you played it. No, I didn't. What is that? So excited. Yeah, it's on my site. Uh, okay. It's if you play it, you're gonna notice it's the exact same beats as the uh, before you go to the desert. Ah. So it's like so it's like an if you imagine an NES version of the current game. Oh, neat! Huh? <clears throat> yeah, I, I really look forward to playing that. People it's a lot of like cave story. Conjac .org, right? Conjac .org. Yeah. You can download. Com was taken. <laughs> you're right. You can download yeah. a lot of your games for free on there. Uh, fewer yeah. for sale. Um, I'm never gonna say it right. Noito love. No, no? it does. It doesn't really matter. <laughs> it's it's backward <laughs> spelling. You read it however you want. <laughs> I'm terrible at pronouncing things. Just ask anyone who's heard me talk about um, Super Smash Brothers Melee. They get so mad. I say melee. I say I should say melee. Things just come out wrong for me. Um, well, mm. Yes. It, it it depends on the person. I was gonna say. <laughs> oh yeah, I guess so. That's yeah. very open-minded of you. Um, now, do you think that if you weren't in Sweden, you would end up being Dead. in the press? <laughs> oh, <I know. laughs> because you don't, I, I'd assume you're, you're on a thin budget, you're making games on your own. Are you still doing like freelance pixel work or design work? Or yeah, it's pretty much always the way forward when I do pixel art. I don't, oh, okay. I don't think they have a huge array of pixel art animate, animators left to pick from, so that's good. Yeah, yeah, that's good for you. Yeah. Your work is mm. proven to be successful. You worked on uh, Contra Four. You worked yes. on. Did you work where on, my like, Where my name is misspelled. No, really. It's it, uh, Sandberg with a U. Oh, son of a bitch! Can they patch that for you? Did you ask him about a patch? Contra Four patch. It, uh, it's pronounced the same, so. <laughs> it's phonetic. It's very open minded of you. Um, well, uh, what are the games? Uh, a lots, lots of licensed games. Nobody played probably. Like Thor? Did you work on the Thor game? Thor? Uh, Thor, yeah. <laughs> that had great artwork. That's uh, the one thing about it that was universally praised in terms of the reviews. I, I don't usually get to design much for them though. Uh, but I, in Mighty Switch Force, I got to, uh, I got one of those gratuitous blonde girls. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, uh, design uh, the other four of them. Oh, Basically, really? Their hairstyles and clothes, yeah. Huh. Did you so do that, that actually, that hand-drawn work then? Because that's not really as much pixel work. A lot of that stuff looks more hand-drawn and scanned. Um, actually, you uh, made the game, no. so you can tell me. How did you go about making that, those graphics, uh, like Switch Force? Well, pixel art is just going to be a, probably a waste of time if you're going to draw it on paper first. I think I'd, Right, that's a good point. Yeah. yeah, It's just so well done, I assumed it was um, hand-drawn and scanned. Uh, we have a question. I, yeah? No, you. what were you going to say? I sort what? of lost you. That's okay. You yeah. were going to say something good, and I cut you off like a jerk. I don't think I was... I, I think I was going to answer the question, actually. Oh. I... I don't consider I consider myself just making games, basically. If you even oh, read okay. if you even read the question yet. <laughs> <laughs> Did not yeah, read Blue. question. Yes, I will. I'm sorry, Sinistar. I will. I will answer the question. Blue asks: So, do you consider yourself an artist or a programmer or both? And you said you just consider yourself someone well, who makes games. Yes. Huh. 
explain that because there's aspects to making games. Do you, do you do the music? Well, I mean, uh, well, yes, I do everything about the game. So I, uh, I'm definitely, de definitely, I'm definitely a, a graphical thinker. Mm. So I really get stuck in these mathematical things when it comes to programming, where I just think in circles before I actually think of the correct thing. It's uh, hard to explain. I've never been very good with math. Huh. So yes, I guess I'm, I am more graphical by nature, I suppose. So yes, I am a graphical thinker. Can you do the music too? <laughs> yeah, no. that's basic, that's one of the most fun parts. How, how do you do everything? Are you sure you do all that? There's a very few people that Jasper Byrne does everything, and uh, yeah, usually they do everything but the music. But I think the music is a fun part, basically. Oh yeah, the because music is fun. Yeah, um, well, that's the same thing. I've been trying to make music for my own games since I made games. So eventually, I'm gonna be able to understand how some melodies sound good. Yeah, I, I don't. Yeah. I don't use a, a synth or MIDI keyboard or anything. I place notes by hand until oh, it works. Yeah. yeah, that's a lot harder. Uh, and pixel art is is by hand and a lot harder too. Uh, because yeah. and yet you're going the hard road. Ninja President <laughs> wants to know how do you like working for a way forward? That's kind of tough. If you don't like it, you, you can't say it. You have to say something nice no matter what, I guess. Well, uh, I'm not a fan of animation in general because it takes so long. But <laughs> they're perfectly—they're very nice people, and I think uh, they're much nicer than most people would be. I've yeah. worked with many different people, and um, well, it's freelance also, so I'm not that involved. But they're fun, humorous people when I talk to them through mail and chat and stuff. So, oh, that's good. Yeah, I've always yeah. liked them a lot. I know Sean Velasco a little bit. And uh, the bosons. Talk to those bosons a couple of times. They probably don't remember. Uh, are you not working on the Adventure Time game at all? Are you? Are you allowed to talk about that? Well, I animate for way forwards. Oh yes. <laughs> well, I, I guess uh, he outed it himself, the creator of Adventure Time, and its pixel art. So it's. I he actually hadn't said it. that it was pixel art yet. I got a hot scoop out of you. Haven't they? They said it was. Uh, they said it was the first DS. Yep, they did. Yeah. A hot scoop out of you. <laughs> Why well, you're well, uh, so excited about think... it? And I, I'm excited. Actually, now this is actually hitting me. You're making the Adventure Time game, dude. It's amazing. Do you get to do little jakes and stuff like that? Uh, well, uh, I don't know if I'm actually allowed to talk about it then. <laughs> yeah, I think you're right. Sorry about that. Yeah. I guess we'll change the subject. But let, mm. let it be announced that I'm really excited that you're making that game because your art is exactly what I always wanted in an Adventure Time game. I'll let you know what Again, I want it to be. I animate. Yeah, I, uh, your, your animation. I, I, I don't make the base sprites. I work from sprites I'm given. Sure, but your animation yeah. is uh, what I consider sprites. Yeah, I get to make the back sides of sprites. The backsides, like the butts. Well, uh, basically, if I'm given a sprite, I'm just gonna get get it from one angle. So oh, I'm yeah, gonna yeah. have to, yeah. You've got to turn them so their butt is showing yeah. while they're running. Did you work yes, on uh, Alien Infestation as well? That's the DS two D game, right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, uh, a little. I uh, did some for the main character, at least, from what I remember, and some weird. Gorilla Alien? I don't know. <laughs> yeah. yeah, great job. I love all those games a lot. Um, Spamfish asks, have you been approached by Nintendo to develop The Legend of Princess, which is your... Yes, but I turned it down. No! What happened? Of course. No, of course. <laughs> that was sarcasm, because if I had been approached, I wouldn't turn it down, and it would be in production, so no, I, I totally haven't. believe you. You're <laughs> such a good poker face there. Uh, Legend of Princess, in case people don't know, is a Zelda-like game. I guess most like uh, Zelda 2 in some ways, because that's 2D. I haven't games. played Zelda 2, but it's, uh, it's an arcade interpretation of Zelda. Huh, interesting. Well, uh, I know I know shitloads about Zelda 2, so... Right, yeah. right. 
Man. Yeah, it's a wonderful game. It's gotten me a lot of praise, at least I hope. Uh, Bob the Cat, lol. Well, I haven't seen you in a while, Bob. Thanks for coming back on the show. Uh, what do you think about the current low price point for side scrollers? Uh, side scrollers have um, gone from being like marquee titles, sixty dollars, fifty dollars titles, to now being kind of like uh, seen as only worth the downloadable price point of ten to fifteen bucks. What, what do you think of that evolution? That's a problem, basically, with all the 2D games to begin with. Uh, especially if they're uh, drawn, people uh, sort of uh, feel that it's worth less, but uh, it can actually be more work when you have to uh, consider how much RAM you have to deal with when textures are basically different animation frames instead of still images on top of 3D models. Sure. It can be harder to uh, do, and of course, drawing everything Consider, uh, for instance, if something is going to have different costumes. When it's 2D art, you have to draw the animations all over again with the uh, these uh, different pieces, unless you're doing like flash animation. Sure. In 3D, you're just uh, mapping skeletal animations to a 3D model, and you can move that across all 3D models almost. Right, right. So, uh, but uh, about the price, um, what I feel about it, uh, I I haven't really thought about it much. <laughs> I mean, a, a game is always worth a price, depending on how good it is. But uh, games in general are pretty overpriced now. I think yeah. that uh, I think that other games basically should go down to that price in that case. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. That makes sense. Um, yeah, the amount of manpower though isn't always equal to the amount of uh, cost to the consumer. Like, um, a lot of first-party Nintendo games are made for a fraction of the budget and a fraction of the, um, the manpower as, let's say, like, Grand Theft Auto or, or um, Skyrim or something like that. Yet they, they cost the same. And it's something that uh, I think we're going to see some big changes uh, coming forward in terms of how games are sold once the, the digital marketplace really gets rolling. Um, and then that, that's something a lot of people have asked is, do you have an interest in getting your games on other digital marketplaces for consoles, for 3DS, Vita, PSN, XBLA, that sort of thing? Well, that's just to do with my stubbornness. Oh, using a program like Construct, which is based on the game's factory and multimedia fusion and those things. I'm yeah. basically tied to PC, thanks to that. So, uh, uh, But I don't feel that if I restarted Iconoclast now in a uh, language that was more compatible with different formats, I would want to start over again. That It would be the fourth time for this game. Yeah, that would be exhausting. So uh, if I'm going to finish it, I'm going to finish it now. I mean, there's some hope because Construct is open source, so we'll see. But I have absolutely nothing against different platforms, and I, of course, want to be on them. It's just I'm making, I'm making games in restricted languages, basically. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That makes so, sense. If, uh, if a man or a woman were to come to you, knock on your door... And ask my hand. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and say, I want to take your game that's not even finished yet and already start porting it over to the 3DS and 3D or start porting it to XBLA where people buy things. Yeah. Or, you know, I have to tell them they have to rewrite it. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah. And um, that would be a challenge for them. But, but if they wanted to yeah. do it, would you be open to that? Well, yeah. Okay, I know some guys. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll have some guys call you. That'd yeah, I've, I've spoken to uh, guys in the past too, but it, again, it doesn't work out, so I'm, I don't have positive experiences to base it on. <laughs> Yeah, I hear you. I hear you. Well, I'll I'll make sure that the guys I talk to are legit first. I'll give you a few months to prove it to us. Uh, small Nick Cave. Oh, what a cute name! He's like Nick Cave with the mustache and the grumpy and the uh, Except crows. Except he's small. Except he's small. Yeah. Yeah. Small Nick Cave babies. What do you? What drove you to work on uh, Noitu? Plus, he loves it. Photoshop. I love. Oh. Uh, what drove you to work on Noitu? Uh. Because you got that one done in nine months. That was like a, a passion project that you just pushed through, it sounds like. Does it mean a series, though? Or just the second one? Um, I, I, I wanted to make the second one because I just wanted to make a simple action game, and I was satisfied with the uh, storyline or sort of the characters of the first game. So I made a, that's basically why I made a sequel, but I wasn't really happy with the Noite Love one. 
It's just that I sort of was in love with the darn concept and oh, all the puns okay. I could make. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's such a huge leap in terms of. I mean, that that's a real re envisioning uh, the, the the sequel. You didn't yeah, it, the same art style. You you really grew it on that one. Yeah, some people have been uh, sort of wanting to play the first one because it seems like the second one continues the story, but all the story you need to know is in the intro to two. So uh, it's, uh, I didn't really expect people to play the first one before they play the second. But it, it's still... Has its own. They, they both have individual charms, which I think is a great way to do a sequel. It's not so much a replacement, for me anyway. Yeah? <laughs> the first one is just so tedious. <laughs> you think so? I don't know. It's got a... I don't know. I just like looking at it. I like being there. And that's a big part of it is crafting a world that people just want to be in regardless of what they're doing. Uh, I think you've done a great job of that. Thanks. Um, what was I going to say? You, uh, yeah, I almost spoke Swedish. Um, the first one, it has an easy mode where enemies die from one hit. And that actually, when I replayed uh, Noitu 1 last time, I thought, oh, that actually feels a lot much uh, better to play it that way, but uh, the funny thing is, if you play it on easy, it has the bad ending, so oh, right, the, way, right. the way to play it uh, actually enjoyably is to get the bad ending. Huh, so, well, but... <laughs> it might be good for some people, yeah, it's a matter of yeah. uh, opinion, like you were saying. Real quick, I should let people know that we're giving away 30 bucks. See the shirt I've got? It's a uh, Pac-Man ghost. Just a few, well, uh, when I buy software, I have the software, so it's yeah, just. Guys, I'm gonna need you to hold on. We're having an audio problem. Oh, okay. Did I do it? This is when we do sign language. I wonder what's happening now. I think talking is still good, actually. Now that I think about it. Well, I can hear you and everything. I don't know what. The problem would be. What a nice Can you hear me? Yeah, you sound great. <laughs> yeah, just hit okay, me. Okay, for you. you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about the uh, audio problem, everybody, but we're back. Uh, I was just going to ask Holocroft's question. How much money does it, uh, of your own, do you put into your games? Well, uh, I don't really spend more money than living expenses. Right. Considering I make everything myself, I don't pay other people, so it's just my living expenses. So it's so just everything. Right, as long as you don't die, then you get to keep making your game. Yeah, I'm not. I'm only half dead. And <laughs> and what's your average day like in in game development? As uh, to be your own boss, you have to be so uh, organized and self motivated, I presume, or else you get. Yeah, bored. and that's the problem. When if I, for instance, work from an office. If I am in the office, I'm going to be motivated to work more than when I am at home like I am now and just go on the internet or something. So I think I would benefit from maybe a team atmosphere at some mm -hmm. point. Mm -hmm. I would probably work even more more efficiently in that case. Sure. So yeah. it's working on your own, it's definitely difficult to keep motivation. Yeah, I'd imagine. I'd imagine. You ever think of moving to the United States and working for... Not at, for someone else, but working with someone else, kind of in their offices alongside them. Uh, I know some guys. Uh, I haven't really thought about moving that much. For instance, I don't probably don't have the money to get started. But yeah, yeah that's true. 
money is the worst. <laughs> It holds yeah. for the back for everything. Well, I hope you move to the United States because then you could come to shows and I could introduce you to all these people and we can do things and have fun. So uh, I'll try to yeah. go to G GDC again. Oh yeah, yeah. That's the one show I never get to go to. Hopefully, hopefully next year. I'll so go. I'll definitely go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was there in two thousand eight, and basically yeah. had no presence. Yeah. Now it's getting bigger though. There's a there's a lot. Going I on. basically. What's that? Go on. <laughs> <laughs> we and the kid asks, when are we going to get a multiplayer game from you? Are you? Have you ever considered making any sort of cooperative or competitive multiplayer game? When I learn netcode. Ah, I know. <laughs> or uh, basically the program support netcode. I don't yeah. think Construct does in any particular way. That must be so awful to, to you. You know how to program very well in certain programs, but... You'd have to like start over from scratch if you wanted to take advantage of all these other different programming languages, and you only have limited time, and you're doing everything by yourself. Ah, oh. <laughs> the thing about uh, graphical thinking as well, uh, Construct and Multimedia Fusion and those programs are graphical uh, interfaces. Basically, you see it written out in a box, uh, banana collides with plate, uh, or something like that, uh, right. and th then this happens in. Um, the kind of syntax that actual uh, real code uses, uh, it's really confusing to me to learn because I've never used it and I'm so used to these graphical interfaces. So the few times I have looked to code, like I know a little bit of PHP, okay. but it's really hard for me to think in that uh, way after all these years. Yeah, I'd imagine. You yeah. just want to move on with actually making the game as opposed to... Yeah, I don't have any patience to learn language. Yeah. I don't have patience to learn most things. Basically, when I make music, it sounds retro because I don't learn all the functions of the programs I use. <laughs> well, I think it sounds great. Yeah, the, your, your, uh, your impatience is leading to a style that I really enjoy. So keep being well, impatient. That's good. Yeah. Uh, what do you plan... What do you use to make your pixel art? Asks the ninja president. Graphic scale, but once again, using it doesn't make art like I do. <laughs> like hey, I, said, I don't even yeah. know what graphic scale is. What does that do? I think it's a Japanese program. It, oh. it costs like twenty dollars. Oh, okay. Like yeah. Oh, uh, otherwise, you can't save gifts, which is basically the whole point. Right, man. Thank you for the advice. I uh, I made a show for a little bit that was all pixel art that I actually did myself called Constructoid. Mm. I don't know if you'd heard of it. Probably not. Not too many people watched it, but I made it frame by frame in Photoshop, and that was awful. That yeah, that can't be very easy. <laughs> yeah, but that's all I knew. Just like you were saying about how you stick to what you know, because it's hard to learn new things. Because I knew Photoshop already, I thought, yeah, I'll just stick with that. Uh, High class penguin asks, do you think platformers could hit a, a sense? Could in a sense be AAA titles again? People seem to like uh, first person shooters. Do you think platformers could come back? And um, I personally... Well, yeah, platformers are more prevalent than ever right now, I think. Donkey Kong Country Returns, uh, Rayman, all the Mario games that basically sell the most. Mm -hmm. um, the 2D Mario games, yeah. It's mostly Nintendo, of course. Uh, but Trine is also a platformer. Mm, that's a good point. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, think, I think they are coming back a lot. It's just that... Often when people ask for things to come back, they ask for specific games to come back. Mm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So uh, I don't know if that if it takes offense to that. But <laughs> no, I don't think so. I, I, what I'm gathering from what he's saying, and um, tell me what you think of this, in terms of the video game culture and media, the press, if you will. Nostalgia is the biggest enemy of the industry. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's a good point. That's a good point. But um, there's also this urge to be kind of, uh, believe it or not, cool. There are people who think you've got to be cool by what video games you like, and it's not necessarily cool to say you like 2D platformers or Mario, even though uh, Mario on uh, New Super Mario Wii sold, I think, 26 million copies. Um, yeah. If you write a news story about uh, New Super Mario Brothers Wii, you're going to get, like, 10 comments, whereas if you write a news story about um, Black oh, Ops or whatever, you'll get 150. Yeah. So there's kind of a culture against... Uh, 2D platformers. Um, well, uh, there's a culture against uh, all the most popular gaming platforms and games because it's not the vocal uh, majority. Uh, oh. It's the vocal minority 
who speaks right. about these bigger games. Sure. It's sort of like Call of Duty. Yeah, I wonder if there's any way to get the vocal minority to love another 2D platformer. To get all those Call of Duty guys to just be like, yeah, I just want to jump over a wall. And I think the closest uh, we, we came was Shadow Complex, I suppose. Oh, good point. Yeah, that really fused <clears throat> the, the, the aesthetic and the thinking of a lot of it, uh, modern AAA it, games. Shadow Complex, Complex is Super Metroid with uh, Uncharted skin. Oh, good way. Yeah, you just summed it up. Thank you for shutting yeah. me up and summing it up. That's better than I would have. Um, would you work for Mojang? Some nerd asks. Would you work for Mojang? Why or why not? I guess if they were paying you, that would be a good job. Interesting note. It's pronounced Mojang and it's Swedish for trinket. Or a t technolog technological uh, trinket. So that's interesting. I hate that I talk so dumb. Thank you for correcting me. Yo, Mo Yang. Swedish for drinking. No, no, no. <laughs> Beware, Swedish J. <laughs> oh, yeah. We have soft J's. So that's yeah. interesting. To me, well, uh, if, if I would work for them, sure. But uh, I, it's sort of like I have this mentality. I'd be, because I'm so retro in everything I do, I don't feel really capable to be sort of if I joined them and started making construct games, for instance, or making oh, pixel on. art. But your ideas! Well, I don't know, 3D fantastic. modeling. Wow. <laughs> I'm getting all steamy. Uh, yes, I can hear. What <laughs> <laughs> matters is that your ideas are so fantastic, at least I think they are, uh, and original, and, and relatable, yet um, surprising. That's not an easy yeah. thing to do. I wish I made more of my stranger ideas, actually, but uh, I usually find more motivation actually making these action games, sort of standard, retro, new games. Sure, for sure. For instance, I'm, I'm, I think I'm going to prototype soon the game I really want to make. It's about a negotiating robot and psycho psychological analysis. Whoa, really? <laughs> yeah, I, that, that's... I finally came up with a gameplay concept for it that I think is going to be very interesting. Basically, I do want to make games like Chalk, for instance. That's a very different game. Sure. I think, anyway. At least for me. It was a miracle that I actually finished that game. It took about three weeks. Um, <laughs> that's, that's, so, so, yeah, that's... Long. No, Jeez. that's a good example. Because the weird games, when I actually get going, which it's like two times I did, Mm. They're finished much, much faster than the huge projects I actually go for. So uh, I probably could have more games finished if I actually went for those ideas more often, but I have no faith in the results because uh. they're different. If I do something based on Super Metroid, I can imagine in my head the end result right. before I even make it. So I have more confidence in how it will turn out. So mm -hmm. I, I did a prototype recently that failed, that didn't really help. And I put it on Twitter. A few people probably tested it. It oh, was, I missed uh, that. Just, well, was it? just about jumping between lines. It didn't really work out, but at least I tried it. So. Huh. So it's sounding like you will get impassioned about an idea that you think might fail or you, you don't think people will get it. But in certain circumstances, you push through it and finish it. And other times, you have a big idea of a whole world you want to craft, and you have a sense that it's going to be successful. But those uh, tasks are harder to complete, I'd, I'd assume, because there's more It's pressure. just more a confidence of how it will turn out more than be successful. Night to Love 2 is an action game. The controls are a risk, of course, but um, it turned out fine. Uh, <laughs> Turn out really. I love the <laughs> controls. For people who haven't played it, and we should back up and talk about that game anyway. I meant to when we first started. It is a 2D platformer that you control uh, the character with one set of controls. You you run and jump, and then you aim with uh, since it's on PC with the mouse. If it were to be on other consoles, I presume you could do it with the touch screen or with a pointer or something that doesn't came with other consoles. So yeah, you have the sense of aiming as yourself. But taking on the the uh, control of another character at the same time, there's a really nice synthesis there and a, a little bit of tension there where you have to think about where your cursor is and where you are at the same time. A couple of other games have done it, like BitTrip, uh, uh, Fate did it. Um, yeah, but after they, you did, I think they might have borrowed that from you a tiny bit. 
uh, I don't know. Basically, my idea was just that it was a brawler game at the speed of a shooting game, like oh, Contra. Yeah. Sure, because you sure. fly around to the enemies and still beat them up, because I prefer melee action. Yeah, yeah, to, yeah. To, uh, to uh, shooting action, even if a Call class has it. Uh, oh, it's a brawler. I've only seen movies of it. That they, yeah, there's no playable build of a Call of class yet, is there? For people. Like yes, me? there is. It has been for a, a year. What? But, <laughs> yeah, because I, I gave up on the game for a while and I just put it out. But um, I gotta go play. I'm considering uh, releasing an updated alpha because there are lots of bugs and uh, the uh, released version isn't widescreen or uh, you can't uh, do any video settings or anything. Sure. Which the game currently is. So uh, maybe wait a bit and <laughs> maybe it will be more official when I re update the alpha. Okay. Well, either way, I look forward to, to playing it. I'll download what I can get. Uh, we've got more questions coming in. Well, this one's from Ruchi. What's your advice for those budding indie developers and those interested in trying to develop games themselves? That's something people must ask you a lot. Uh, how yeah. do you think they should go about it? That's, again, I'm going to be boring because I've been doing this for 12 years since I was 12 or 13. Yeah. And I've just been practicing since then, and I can't really tell people try to make games for twelve years. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I I didn't really start five years ago, and if I did, I think I would have some advice because it's perfectly possible to start this year and make a good game next year. Sure. But I, that wasn't my situation, so I've never been good at giving advice. Well, uh, let's put it this way: <clears throat> if you could talk to, you could go back in time. You've got to be in the next Back to the Future and go back to you, maybe not 12 years ago, because when you were 12, you'd probably be like, who's this creepy man talking to me? But uh, if you went back in time and talked to you at like 16 and could tell 16-year-old uh, you what you know now and try to guide yourself in the right direction, what kind of advice would you give yourself? Learn to program. <laughs> <laughs> Start with programming first, it sounds like. Uh, as opposed to just putting your ideas out there as soon as you can? Uh, yeah, <laughs> I will tend myself to uh, start making games as something more portable, basically. Mm. Uh, that's all I can think of right now, but uh, I think my... I don't think I would... Um, if you go back in time and tell yourself you're gonna be great in the future, you might lose motivation to get better. <laughs> Basically, I always worry I will get confident. Yeah, you're right. The time travel paradox is kind of dumb. I probably shouldn't have brought it. <laughs> but who knows? If you could go back in time and talk to yourself, then you could... Uh, no, you're right. You'd probably screw yourself up. Um, <laughs> the next question is from... Uh, I will slap myself on the head. <laughs> Isla asks... She's playing through uh, Noito Love again. No Did he crash? <laughs> and remembering how little twists and turns the plot had. Remembering how little they had. Uh, do you think the story of the first game? Do you like the the? Do you like story first? Am I reading? I, Am I, I think I think the person is implying that it it does have twists and turns, but uh, the little isn't that there are few. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. Thank you for understanding and reading. I think so. Anyway, something. Like uh, that. I did not think of story first for that game. Iconoclast is definitely... Uh, I don't write scripts or anything. I take notes of uh, story beats, I think of. Oh, but it's defi good. definitely um, a story idea, premise I had for Iconoclast, but it changes constantly as I develop the game. Mm -hmm. But it's definitely, it definitely, definitely has the uh, decided beginning and end, and uh, everything in between is sort of evolving all the time. And it's a theme I want to go for and everything. So that's uh, that's basically uh, as far as I think about it. Uh, I think, basically, that story should be allowed to evolve, not be a script. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and For instance, Not Love 2 has a plot, basically, that's supposed to parody it really bad uh, retro plots. <laughs> basically, oh. with, it poses the argument that time travel is... It, says it's impossible, but instead they uh, 
gathered recording from the universe to recreate worlds locally from the past as they exactly were then. So it's not actually time travel, it's recreating the way things were. So it's a much worse explanation for it. <laughs> that's basically the parody. Well, that sort of makes <clears throat> sense, physics-wise. I think it's more likely they can do that. Well, uh, that, that implies you can catch up with the uh, information that once happened and <laughs> gather it and bring it back again. It's yeah. sort of weird. Computers. We only have 10 minutes left. I'm sad. This has been a great talk. <laughs> I want to make sure I get in all the stuff I want to talk about. Uh, things I wanted to ask you were, do you consider yourself an indie developer? Do you think there's any kind of stigma to that? Because I know a lot of people who make games on their own, they're like, don't call me indie. That implies that I'm like a, an artsy, um, you know, avant-garde intellectual goofball. I just want to make some good video games, they say. And then other people say, oh yeah, of course I'm indie. I don't have any money. What else would you call me? Um, so I, um, I think I call myself indie on my Twitter profile, but <laughs> basically yeah. I, I've been making games since before it was a term, so I'm just a game maker in my mind. Mm -hmm. So uh, I've just been, uh, I be, uh, became a part of that group by just being who I already was. So, uh, I mean, there is a stigma with people who uh, just automatically brush the games off because the most prolific games are the weirdest games, I suppose. And sure. people don't look... Uh, if a game is actually um, traditional, they don't look at it as an indie game. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And your so games, just, by large, are... Well, there's some weird ones, but there's also some traditional ones, too. Uh, it doesn't sound like you put yourself into just one style and force yourself to stick there. No, I want to make all kinds of games, but it's sort of like my projects always end up being these action games. So I definitely want to prototype something else soon, even if that means doing it at the same time as Iconoclast, and I'm terrible at making two games at once. Yeah, but, yeah uh, I would imagine it would be impossible. It would be like having two girlfriends at once. It would be yeah, hard. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, let's see, Bob the Cat Lowell wants to know, do you think younger gamers can be introduced to side-scrollers if they just play certain genres? Like, a lot of kids I know, 10-year-olds, only play Call of Duty and, like, Angry Birds, and that's it. Do you well, think uh, when, hmm? when we were younger, everyone just played Mario or Contra, but... Um, uh, Something I always say is that genres should never be replaced because a genre is a completely different thing from another genre. It's the same thing with 2D gameplay and 3D gameplay. Mm -hmm. They will always come back in some form. I wish they would always be welcome at all times, all genres, all fidelities, all uh, dimensions. Yeah. But um, <clears throat> basically, I always say that's always uh, more to find in every genre and every... Uh, approach to making games. So, uh, I don't know, how am I answering the question? <laughs> you answered it deeper. You were basically saying there's still more uh, for platformers to do and that kids could get introduced it's, to that. If anything, this generation has proven that genres are cyclical <laughs> in, oh, terms yeah. of, uh, in terms of popularity. Mm -hmm. But uh, mm -hmm. my wish is uh, that everything is welcome at all times. I think we're heading in that direction, but something is always going to be the trend. Yeah, that's true. Something will always be bigger than other things, but but yeah. at this point, everything is possible, and there's an audience for, for every kind of game. Um, I really, I had this weird idea about talking to you about Other M for some reason, because you're so open-minded, and you've publicly said to me on Twitter that you like Resident Evil 5 a lot, and a lot of people consider... Well, yeah, basically what I'm saying with the, uh, that is uh, people tell me... Uh, that uh, IPs are supposed to be a certain way. And mm. uh, if they change it a lot, what, what's the point in making it the same IP? What mm. I say then is that uh, something like Super Metroid has the uh, uh, high jump boots, it has the uh, power bomb, it has morph ball, it has screw attack. Sure. <clears throat> These are concepts that are owned by that series. Mm -hmm. If they're not allowed to change the gameplay around those ideas, that's really boring. So mm -hmm. I really liked Other Ram because it changed the gameplay but kept those power-ups and did new things with them. A new IP wouldn't have those power-ups even if they were copies or something. It's, right. I mean, the same thing, it has the universe and the lore and the enemies and all that stuff. 
I won't defend the story of Other M, but I really love the gameplay. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, the gameplay is definitely the, the strongest point. I, I personally found the pacing was a little off. There was a lot of times where you're getting into it, and then it would stop you and force you to just yeah. look at a green slime. You have to watch the cutscenes and everything. Yeah, the cutscenes, <laughs> they slowed me down a lot. Um, Pixel hunting. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, so you would, uh, Riku78 wants to know, would you work for Nintendo if they asked you to? Well, sure. Uh, unless it was for, like, the mail room or something, I wouldn't do it. Uh, <laughs> sure. Uh, if they wanted yeah. you to make Metroid, I guess they'd be up to five now, because all the other ones were... Yeah, I'd between. make, like, Metroid Insurrection or something. <laughs> it's always a word like that. <clears throat> Chronicles or Insurrection or yeah, um, yeah. I'd love Revelations. <laughs> yeah, how many Revelations? <laughs> are Resident Evil Revelations. Um, Assassin's Creed. Yeah, Assassin's Creed yeah. Revelations. Yeah. Or um, what's the one that Sonic always does? Oh yeah, Unleashed. So many Unleashed. Um, have you played Mirror's Edge? And what was your take on that? That's from Heat Fury. I thought Mirror's Edge was very fun, very fun to run around in, but it tried to force so many other gameplay elements that shouldn't have been there in there, so I didn't play for very long. It was just a giant big frustration for me. Oh, uh, I see. Uh, so the, yeah. the things it did well you liked, but it threw too many extra things on. That, um, yeah, it d felt like they didn't have confidence to just make it parkour. Like, it, all the gunplay, all the... Uh, basically, it shouldn't really even have... Uh, uh, falling deaths, mm -hmm. pit deaths. Uh, I really like just running around, running on the walls, hopping up and climbing things. I think there's, uh, uh, and the aesthetics. Sure, uh, yeah, graphic design. I great. think it would have been fun to just run around and climb on the buildings and do things. You didn't yeah. have to have the action. I wonder if that would have sold better or worse. It's hard to worse. Say. I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, people want a starting point for, for something yeah. that's going to make them feel powerful, like shooting a guy in the face. Um, well, seven minutes to go. I gotta, I'm got to. i going to do the question. Oh, yeah, you can feel free to participate in this question. Far be it from me to disqualify my uh, luscious, not luscious, uh, gracious guest. Sorry, mm -hmm. I almost called you luscious. That would be creepy. What's happening uh, here? <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing the trivia question for thirty dollars a threadless. It's a threadless shirt. Pac Man. Oh, come on. You can see that Pac Man, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's yeah, perfectly yeah. fine. I'm just being difficult. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. Thank you so much mm -hmm. for being on the show. You've been a great guest. Um it's been the a question pleasure. is, let me do it from memory. Which Contra game because you worked on Contra Four, so I thought I'd do a Contra question. And you like Contra too, don't you? I like the third one basically. I love because it's game. because it's the one I remembered as a kid. I can't play any other now. Yeah, they're all pretty hard. Third one has yeah. a, a nice successful filter. Though. So what contra? I played you? Super Pro Protector. That's contra. Oh, you're European. Yeah, yeah. How about that about you? Uh, how can I forget Everything, that? Yeah. Go on. Hurry. Oh, okay. <laughs> all right. Yeah. Trivia yeah. question. I've got two minutes. <laughs> Which contra game has a hidden boss? That is a giant demon with a militarized baby carriage. Do you know the answer? Yes. You do? Yeah. I guess you shouldn't say it. Because if you do, then uh, everyone will just get it and win immediately. But may how do you know that? You're so smart. Because I, I watch as much uh, games as I play just yeah, to no. see everything. <laughs> <laughs> I end up watching more games than I play these days, too. Well, anyway, yeah, email me. You can enter the contest. I hope you win. I hope everyone yeah. wins. Uh, yeah. We have one minute that, left. That boss is there. famous for the music as well. Yeah, there. Whoa, that was a good hint. <laughs> Very good. Mm. Um, is there anything you want people to know either about your game on Steam right now or Iconoclast? Because we've only got, like, 30 seconds left. Just say whatever you want. The floor is yours. I... I have a game called Iconoclasts. It is a game, and you can play it sometime in 2020. <laughs> <laughs> You'll get it done before that. And you want people to buy your game on your website and on Steam. Yeah, That's sure. Awesome uh, yeah, just be prepared. You can freeze. Everything <laughs> can freeze. That's fine. Yeah. I'll just play it and <laughs> yeah, that's very nice of you to warn them, but um, I, I think they'll understand. And when you have fun with a game, you don't mind. It's like when you fall in love. 
you know, <laughs> you, you fall in love with someone, and then it turns out that they smell at night. You know, I hear the complaints way. much more than the compliments, of course. <laughs> of course you do, but um, yeah. but hopefully I'm here to compliment you and make up for that. All right, that's the end Say of the goodbye. show, everybody. Goodbye. Yeah. Bye. <laughs> Is it over? Well, first Holmes was born, then he got fat, bald, and tired, tired, tired. What's up, Holmes?